So hi, one of the Good Noise Podcast. We're here with Benji from Not A Toy. We're going to ask him some questions today. I'm going to start. What inspired you guys to start the band, and what does the band name mean? Say the first part of that question again. I'm sorry. What inspired you guys to start the band? Okay. And then what does the band name mean? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Cool. So um, we all got together in high school. Uh, we all went to high school together. So we all just naturally liked playing music and we had all on our own paths, you know, picked up a certain instrument and then, um, you know, we all vibed with each other. So we were like, we should come together for sure. And, uh, and, and jam, you know, and just like see what happens, play some music together. Okay. Uh, and then the band name, not a toy. So we actually, I don't mean to get like too far into a digression, but we used to be called Shatterproof. And that's like the name that we worked under in high school. And we were a little bit more like uh, aggressive. We had more screams, you know, it was more rock for sure of a sound. Um, and over the course of the last two years, we felt this natural progression and change happening. And with us getting signed to Fearless, we were like, okay, now's the chance to like, start as essentially a new project because the sound had changed so drastically the name didn't seem to fit anymore we also had a band member uh leave uh the band so we were like let's just let's change it up uh it took us probably like six months to rename the band but wow. we literally had like a i still have it on my phone i'll keep it forever we have a list of like over 300 names damn oh my god it's kind of difficult to name a band you know there's a lot of like really bad band names that work and so yeah. you know so like if you're trying to name the band and it's not only like like one person would love a name the other person doesn't like it we had to be unanimous on it so yeah. um one night i i had done some online shopping and there was a transparent bag on the counter i saw not a toy and i was like not a toy that's this bag is not a toy i was like that's pretty it's pretty sick no one else had been no other bands were not a toy it was trademarkable and um the band name really means, you know, like, don't play with me, you know, like, mm -hmm. uh, you know, we're not a toy. And I think it's, it, it, it can be kind of powerful, you know, self-empowering of just kind of like branding yourself as like, yeah, yeah, I'm not a toy, you know, don't yeah. play with me. Yeah. So, you yeah, guys so have a long answer to your question. Oh, that's oh it good. was great. You yeah. guys have that stylistic thing where it's like in all caps. Is there any reason for that? Um, Not really. I think we were just trying to find a way that we aesthetically liked looking at the name and what looked mm -hmm. best. And I think right now we've landed on all caps looking the best, though. I'm sure like our logo and our branding will shift and change as the years progress. Um, but right now we were just kind of like, yeah, this looks the best. Okay. All right. You mentioned you had roughly about 300 names. Do you remember any off the top of your head that you could tell us? Yeah. Um, <laughs> pretty strange. Mm -hmm. Pretty strange is one that we were like, yeah, we could pretty strange. We're like, do we want to be pretty strange though? Mm -hmm. um, and I think there's a band that's really close to that now that I saw recently. Um, and then, uh, to be honest, branded like mm -hmm. TH um, was another one. God, we almost went with Dead Crush. <laughs> we Dead <bet> Crush. <laughs> Does not fit your music at all. No. <laughs> no. You know, we joke, we like tossed around. We're all kind of like, yeah, it's kind of hard. That's kind of sick. And then uh, mm -hmm. we didn't go with that. Um, and then there were just a lot of like, really just like off the, like, hey, Alice was one of them. Like, mm -hmm. I don't know. Just, we, we, we were They're just, just random. Well, yeah. yeah, exactly. All right. Yeah. And right. then Solid. you did mention getting signed to Fearless. Can you tell us a little bit about how that happened? Um, also a bit of a long story. Go for uh, it. I'll, I'll keep it as good as possible. Um, so we got signed to a smaller record label, a uh, smaller indie label called Revival Recordings um, mm -hmm. out of North Carolina. The lead singer of Alisana, Sean Milkey, runs that label. And he signed us. And I think we were on them for about seven months and then Hopeless Records approached Revival um, and wanted to buy us out of our contract and sign us. And so we were super stoked. Um, and then we went into those negotiations and the guys at Hopeless are so sick. Like uh, the dudes who run it are two of the nicest guys I've definitely ever met. Uh, and so it was a hard decision, but then uh, Fearless caught wind that we were gonna get signed to Hopeless. Um, and so they came in and gave us uh, a better deal and. We just kind of it was more that you know more what we were looking for and 
Fearless had really truly been like the label we wanted to get signed to from the beginning, mm -hmm. um, like since like 2012. Like I would I would hit up Fearless on Twitter when we were at work <laughs> and like desperately try to get their attention. Um, so when they when they sent us the offer, it was it was pretty sick. Um, and then yeah, we got bought out of our contract in uh, at Revival Recordings and signed with Fearless at the end of 2018. So. Okay. That's cool. Wow. I'm so happy for you guys. That's awesome. So much. Yeah, we're super stoked. They're awesome. I love literally their entire team is so talented. It's really refreshing. It's nice. Yeah. Yeah. So can you tell us a little bit about your writing process? The writing process. It's funny. I feel like our band has gone through several different writing processes where like we used to just jam you know in the band room and just like jeremy our guitarist to be like oh i got this riff like and he lays it down i put a beat down i'm like oh yeah and then we just kind of like expand that way um mm -hmm. but now our writing process is really just from behind a computer and it's usually branson um uh, our singer or tj um our keys and violin player um who's engineering and then either they have a beat or they've already kind of expressed an idea or, you know, like there's, there's some sort of like starting foundation. And then we just build on top of that and all sit in a room and kind of usually one person's in control and has a certain like idea for where the song should go. We let them express that idea. And then we try to kind of like shape it in where if we like it, you know, maybe try this type of drum sound or distort that or reverse that, you know? Mm -hmm. uh, so it's kind of like four producers sitting in a room, just constructing a song together. Um, and it's, it's, we've gotten it a little bit more streamlined where we'll get an idea to a point. And then like Jeremy and I will go branch off, take the song and go, you know, make the chorus sound bigger and just like start adding layers and, you know, doing all that stuff while Branson and TJ are working on the vocal sound. And so we kind of divide and conquer um, with what our strengths are. So I think we've gotten it pretty efficient. I'm really excited to see what we are able to produce with like that kind of process, because that's a newer process that we've started. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, so you guys have this new EP, it's your self-titled, and you guys, it's not out at the time of recording, but how do you feel about the response to the singles you've released for it so far? It's been good. It's been a good response. Um, you know, of course, like being artists, we were pretty nervous. we have been sitting on the songs for like at least a year and a half. Um, so it was, uh, it, it was pretty nerve wracking, but I think the response has been really good. We've been met with a lot of love, the appropriate amount of hate, you know? <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Not overwhelming, but just like, just a little sprinkle. Exactly. And yeah. you need a little sprinkle of hate because if everybody just loves it, I feel like maybe you're, you're not trying, you should be trying harder. Like yeah. you're not pissing somebody off somewhere. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't think you're doing it right, so. Got a point. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So where was your headspace while making the EP? Um, our headspace was pretty confused to be completely honest with you hmm. because we, we signed a Fearless as Shatterproof. Uh, I don't okay. think we talked about this with anyone like publicly. So we signed a Shatterproof and the transformation came through writing the EP because we wrote probably four rock songs, like full, you know, like rock anthems and then mm -hmm. We wrote the stuff that is being released today, which is a little bit more modern, vibey. I don't really know what you'd call it. Um, so we we thought we were going to be able to do like half rock, half production type, you know, almost bring me the horizon esque. Um, but the reality was, is like, you know, we were trying to be like bring me the horizon where like they do it so much better than we were doing it. So <laughs> the songs that we wrote that are being released today were the ones that were like the strongest songs we felt. Um, and so we were kind of confused. We really didn't know like what we were going for. And we just went in the basement and we were like, all right, let's just write whatever we want. And I feel like we wrote the rock songs because we at that time were a rock band mm -hmm. and wrote the other stuff because that's genuinely what was like, you know, where our inspiration was coming from. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Yeah, so we definitely, it was a discovering experience during the EP writing process, I would say. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, so what would you do differently on your next release that you didn't get to do on this one? Um, as far as like the way the music is or? Yeah, just like in the process of making it. Shit, bro, I hope we can play a show. <laughs> I hope That'd be cool. That'd be cool, yeah. An album release show. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. 
you know? Uh, but I think now we have a clear directive of like what we're going for and how to write and the sounds that we're wanting to use. And, you know, so I think efficiency is something that we're really gonna be better at for this next release. And, you know, this is our first time being signed. Uh, it's like a significant record label and going through this process has been a huge learning curve as just far as like how things work, how much time things take. So I think for the next release, we're just going to be way more efficient, you know, have mm -hmm. a clear ability to do stuff. Yeah. All right. So you had mentioned like, uh, you know, wanting to do an album release show or at least hoping that you could do one for the next release. Are there any live streams on the horizon or anything to celebrate the release of this EP? You know, we're definitely, that's a good question. We're definitely, we've talked about it a lot um, and we're trying to figure out the best way to go about it. Cause to be completely honest, like, we haven't played a show as not a toy. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. So it seems a little anticlimactic to, um, you know, do a live stream show for our first show. I get that. Yeah. Um, but I think we will incorporate live streams just to interact with the people who have started to uh, become fans of the music, you know, excuse me. And uh, yeah, so we'll, we're, we're going to try and get creative with live streams, you know, but we don't want to just be like one more live stream performance you know what i mean unless the people were just begging for it i guess okay. yeah. makes sense makes yeah. sense so on the topic of the ep while listening to it what band or artist influences do you think you can hear you mentioned bring me the horizon mm -hmm. so are there any others yeah definitely um i don't know if bring me the horizon was necessarily actually for the songs that made the cut and inspiration okay. Um, but as far as the other ones, I mean, Kanye West, as far as his just approach to the creative process and sounds, uh, definitely, mm -hmm. um, uh, the neighborhood is a big influence of ours. Um, I know Branson is really inspired by like Lana Del Rey style vocals, as well as a lot of hip hop. Um, you know, he's a huge fan of like Anderson Pack and, uh, Earth Gang and a lot of these really like what people like they, they do a lot of interesting stuff with their voice and I think he that's you know a lot of his like vocal inspirations um and then Jeremy he loves like the uh, we all love trap music we have such an affinity for trap but yeah so I think those were some of like the main inspirations though okay. all, right. all right solid it's a great list yeah. yeah so is there a certain feeling you want the listeners to have while listening through the EP yes um right um you know I mean, like I said, I want them to like it. I want, of course, we want them to like the music, but you know, I mean, ultimately I feel like whatever they just like naturally feel, you know, like, like a, some songs we write with a certain, you know, energy or motive. And of course we would want like that, like J cash is a little bit more of like an aggressive song, you know, um, I'd want that to like fire people up and stuff like that. But ultimately I just want them to have, if our music gives you an emotional response, then I think we're doing our jobs. You know, whatever that emotional response is, that's that's unique to the listener. Mm -hmm. But as long as we're invoking something, I think we're doing our job. All right. All right. Yeah. Solid. Yeah. So we know you have an EP on the horizon that you're about to drop, but are you about to drop anything else? Like, is there an EP, an album, maybe a single that you're working on in addition to that? Definitely. Um, okay. We yeah so we're hoping to uh i don't want to give too much away there, there will okay. definitely be new music um most likely in the form of singles um trickling in for the rest of the year and then we are also going to be dropping our fall winter line of clothing um in september hopefully we're we're putting a lot of work into it to make the clothes extremely comfortable um so it's taking a little bit longer than it normally would um but yeah, so we'll definitely have clothing. We're, we're going to be sprinkling content throughout the rest of the year. I mean, our band has essentially been born in COVID. So it's, yeah. it's, um, it's an interesting time to try to figure out what people actually want. Because I think this year has made a lot of people realize life is, you know, there's a lot of things in life that are important and a lot of things in life that aren't important. And we're not just trying to sell things to people. You know, we want to give them things that... Um, they 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 want and that make them feel better you know so we'll be we'll be definitely uh sprinkling some content in the rest of the year all right all right all right all right hey. uh so where do you see the project in the next five years ultimately uh i think we'll be located because we're a little bit spread out right now i think we'll all be located in los angeles and uh we 
are, you know, really just trying to impact the culture for the better. And, um, and so I would hope that our message has been received well. And through that, we've been able to grow the, um, you know, the crowd of people that we're able to um, give that message to. Um, so, you know, I mean, every band wants to be the biggest band, you know, but I think we just want to continue to make music and influence the culture and, um, and whatever comes with that comes with that, you know, of course, success is on our minds. We want the music to do well. Um, but yeah, man, I think we just want to be able to meet and interact with as many individuals as possible. Um, and just have as positive of an impact on those individuals as, as possible. All right. All right. That's wholesome. Um, so for the last couple of questions, we're actually going to shift away from music and go straight to death row. So if you're on death row, what would your last meal be with a drink? Good question. Um, Thank you. Yeah. You know, I feel like this is one of those questions that like you ask somebody late at night, and you're super tired. Mm -hmm. What would you, what would your last meal be, bro? <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, I, I have to say I'm a California boy. Um, I think it'd be in and out burger. Like mm. I, I know that's like fast food and I know most people would be like filet with sauteed onions, <laughs> mashed potatoes, but like, I'm really, uh, really more on board with, you know, that double, double animal style, get some French fries, chocolate shake. Mm -hmm. We're there. Yeah. All that's right. my name. Sure. Sounds delicious. Yeah. Oh yeah. Very, you guys had in and out I've never had in and out before. Nope. So it sucks because everybody, we've had like three people say in and out so I'm like, okay, I must, <laughs> it must be good. So yeah. God, yeah. You know, it's super delicious, but like, if you haven't had it and haven't grown up with it, I find that some people just like, don't like it, which is fine. I grew up with it. It was mm -hmm. like, a, okay, that was a staple in my childhood. So yeah. um, I understand when people don't like it, but it's bomb. It's super okay. Bomb. All, right. Yeah. All right. I'll take your word for it. Yeah. Um, so if you could live in one fiction world for a week, where would you live? fictional world mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that's a good question um i did always want to go to bikini bottom as you should <laughs> i did always want to get some krabby patties like even the cartoon krabby patties look delicious like yeah i, I get hungry from watching spongebob eat the krabby patty so i i think i'd go to bikini bottom and tear it up with the fish all right all right solid so I have the honor of asking the last question. Every single person we have spoken to have said it's the most important question. What's your favorite color? <laughs> um, it's, it's a boring answer. It's, just, it's probably just black. Black. Right. I okay. respect it though. Solid. Yeah, yeah. I, I just think I, I wear black. I like black items. I always have a black iPhone. My laptop is black. You know, my drum kit's white, but you know. <laughs> It's the contrast. Yeah. Contrast. It works. Yeah. Everything can't be black all the time. You exactly. Know? Exactly. Yeah. yeah. But uh, yeah, definitely. I, I wear a lot of black, except my beanie. It makes me look like a highlighter. But... <laughs> uh, <laughs> so as Glory said, that's all the questions we have today. Is there anything you would like to plug? Uh, the plug. One, thank you guys for having me. It's an honor. Um, two, yeah, you know, just keep an eye out. Like we're really planning on just uh, – having as much for you guys as possible as far as music and clothing. The clothing is going to be really sick. We're not just doing band merch. Like we're, we're literally putting a lot of heart and effort into making um, really comfortable style clothes. So that's coming out um, fall, winter, September, October, hopefully. And uh, mm -hmm. yeah, thank you again for having me guys. Yeah. Thank you for coming yeah. on. So uh, this has been Benji from not a toy and we're the good noise podcast.